Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So about two years ago, I built this gun cart with a set of aliens extermination arcade guns that I had to uh, find on eBay. I didn't really know how they worked. I didn't know uh, if they could be plug and play. I didn't know how to power them, uh, but I figured that out. Uh, I made a video about it, just made this cart with a PC on it. They could just roll it up to any TV. This is an 85 inch, looks amazing. And uh, you could just go. There's a, been a lot of interest in that video and a lot. the number one question for literally two years now is, can you get the recoil working on games other than Aliens Extermination and Far Cry? So those games use these guns uh, natively and in the arcades, they, they recognize these guns. So if you had a, a copy of that game, then it would also recognize these guns and it would utilize the recoil, the lights, the counters, everything. But for all the other games that I added to this uh, playlist, uh, there was no recoil, there was no counters, anything like that. So in even newer games like Aliens Armageddon, which there was a version that used these guns as well, Aliens Armageddon played through Techno Parrot does not detect these guns. Uh, that may be because Techno Parrot uh, is actually overriding the inputs for whatever you set the input to in Techno Parrot. But uh, Aliens uh, Armageddon treats these guns the way all of my other emulated games do, which is they're just two big analog joysticks. There's potentiometers at the base of each gun, so they just read as X and Y, and that's just moving your crosshairs on screen. These are not light guns, there's no sensors on the TV, and uh, so you can set them up with any emulator that can recognize you know, direct input, uh, you know, analog controls. I knew that there was a way to get this recoil working. I had read through a couple forums where people had got it working using MAME Hooker, and I knew nothing about MAME Hooker. I'm really a novice at it. But the uh, forums that I went through and, you know, tried to catch up on it, and I knew it was possible. I saw some examples, but I was really having inconsistent results, like, with, it was really hit and miss. It seemed like just sheer luck when I got it to work. So that's when, just a couple months ago, Dean Sharkey over at Sharkade actually made a, a little countercade version of this same kind of setup with two guns, only he went deep dive into Maim Hooker, Output Blaster, Demol Shooter, and he got recoil working on a number of games. So he was nice enough to share some of the machine code with me, and I was able to look at his examples. It wasn't exactly plug and play, no hand holding, uh, there was no instructions book or whatnot, and I know from personal experience that you can't just take someone else's config, put it on another computer and it's gonna work. So I was looking at it and I struggled with it for a bit, but I did get, eventually, uh, got MAME Hooker working. And the biggest problem with MAME Hooker with these guns is that if you go into MAME Hooker and tell it to show supported devices, these don't show up. So these are not, you know, you can't directly control these through the MAME Hooker GUI. However, Dean found the machine code needed to initiate the recoil and the uh, barrel lights for these guns. So then it was just a matter of how do I actually tell MAME Hooker to send those commands when there are shots happening in the game. So these are a full dynamic recoil on most games, meaning that if it's single shot, you pull the trigger and you get one click. If it's full auto, you get a bunch of clicks. If you're out of ammo, you get no clicks. So um, I'm gonna go through with what I've learned this week um, I was able to go and get the gun cart from my brother, so do some updates, add Aliens Armageddon, Terminator Salvation, but while I had it, I wanted to try to give Maim Hooker another go. And this might not be the best way, this is definitely not the only way, but it's worked for me, and I just hope that if some of you out there have these guns, that maybe you can go through this video and get a little help so you don't struggle as much as some of the rest of us did. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of my configs here and stick around for the end of the video where I'm gonna show a bunch of examples of all this code working. Okay, and finally we get down to the secret sauce. So if you install MAME Hooker, uh, go ahead and just extract it. I went ahead and dropped it uh, into directly into my MAME file. So, you know, the MAME directory where I'm running a lot of my old school games, I just dropped it in there alongside everything else. When you run MAME Hooker, uh, it's just gonna run in your system tray down here. So we're just gonna double click on the system tray icon for MAME Hooker, and that's gonna bring up the debug window. So when you're first setting this up and testing things, go ahead and run your games in windowed mode. Like, so I'm gonna use uh, the Model 2 emulator's example. So I'm just gonna open this and make sure that it's not set to switch to auto screen, auto full screen. And I'll close that out. 
And same thing if you were in TechnoParrot or something, just run everything in windowed mode. That way you can see your debug window when you're testing. So anyway, when you install MameHooker, uh, when you first set it up, you want to go into your INI file. So it's INI, and you're going to see a default, and you're going to see your different emulators. Now, uh, when you run a game, you're, you know, the debug window is going to show you if it's hooked or not. So I'm just going to go ahead and run my script for Gunblade, uh, Gunblade New York. And just so you guys can see what that script looks like first, you can see that this is a running Demol Shooter, target Model 2, ROM Gunblade. This is just like I run in my, uh, all of my cabinets to support two-player gunplay. But Demol Shooter also supports output to MAME Hooker. So this is a great thing to use uh, where it's already configured. I just wasn't leveraging that MAME Hooker till now. Then it runs Emulator Gunblade. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run that now, and it's going to run in windowed mode. And you can see here, MAME Hooker instantly picked it up. Now I have all my emulators set to go, just go to MAME. I just think it's easier. Uh, I think Dean Sharkey did the same thing, uh, from what I could tell. But it's just all of your screen, I and I's in the ready same to take place. Off. So I exit out of that game. And you, now if we jump over into that I and I MAME folder, we're going to see that it created a Gunblade I and I. And just to show that it did create it, I'm going to go ahead and move that out of there. And we'll run the script again to launch the game. And you see it just created the I and I file. So I'm going to put my original I and I back in there and overwrite the blank one that it created. And let's take a look at that I and I. This is the one that I've written here for uh, Gunblade New York. And you can see it's all of the same states are here that were over here in the debug file. So all you have to do is just go in and throw in what you want to happen when those various outputs are triggered. So here's my recoils and here's my life gauges. So the, uh, the blank file would, would just have CTM recoil equal nothing. So P1 life equal nothing. So this is where I've customized it to utilize the guns. And this is where I want to really, again, thank Dean Sharkey for coming, finding all of this machine code here. This is the magic numbers right here. This is the code for the left hand or player one guns recoil. This sends a single recoil action. This is the player two one. It's the exact same code. It's just GHD two instead of GHD one. This is the command to activate the LED strips that uh, light up when you pull the uh, triggers. These are one-time activations, so they don't need to be set into every game. Once these are uh, these commands are sent once, they're good for the entire time that the guns are powered on. They only need to be reactivated after the power has been cut to them. And these activate the counters. So again, for guns one and guns two. To show what the counter is showing, if you look at these, this last portion here, where it's H03, H09, and H01. So H03 is talking about the counter, H09 is talking about the first digit, and H01 is talking about the second digit. If you want it, uh, whatever you want it to show, you change that, in this case, you change the nine, and the one to whatever you want. And those are the digits it's gonna show on the back of the gun. So it's gonna show 15 here. So, and this one is gonna show 92 on the second gun. These are just random numbers I have for examples, but you can force the guns to show an actual value. So if uh, like in Gunblade New York, when you start the game, a player one life goes to three. So what I can do here, I can actually make this go to show zero, and this one, instead of zero, three, right, if you do percent s percent, that grabs the current value of that, uh, that item. So, you know, if I put that into P1 life, and I put zero for the first number, and percent s percent, it's going to grab the value that's coming back out of MAME hooker up here. So it's going to show three when you have full life, and when you get shot once, it's going to show two. So that's a way to make these dynamic. Same thing when it goes to ammo count in like Aliens Armageddon or Terminator. You can just go ahead and put this, uh, this command here. Instead of in P1 life, you can put it up to uh, P1 ammo. So, but yeah, that's the trick. Just get yourself, make sure your games are hooking. 
And so you can do that by opening your debug window, launching a game, and then when it does hook, you're going to have an INI file uh, be generated. And all you want to do is just populate these INI files with however you want them to react. And if you have a set of these aliens guns, you can do that with the machine code that uh, I just showed you before here for your barrel activations, your counters, and your recoil. Uh, the only other piece of advice for people with these aliens guns is with those barrel lights, because there is just a one-time activation, rather than putting it into every single game INI, if you jump into the INI parent folder, one up from the main one, there's a default INI. This is what it's going to read if there's no emulator running. So like when you first start uh, Windows, for example, as soon as MAME Hooker launches, it's going to read this file. So I just put the command to activate both barrels of player ones and player two. I took the two commands, separated them by a comma, and I put them in this start section here of default I and I. That way they're activated as soon as Windows starts and they stay activated no matter what until you go ahead and shut down the power. So I've made a second playlist inside the 70 total games that are currently on this gun cart. Right now this playlist is 16 games, but it's games that I've configured so far to use the recoil counters and lights. And I, I can be adding to this as I configure more I and I files out of MAME Hooker. But here's a couple of examples. Here's the new House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn. Here's Gunblade New York. Okay, now in this game, the counter in the back is actually your life gauge. Now I've just taken damage here. This is reading now two life. And two damage now on that guy. Classic Terminator 2 Arcade. You can see as the gun power drops, the recoil gets slower and harder. And we got Transformers Human Alliance. Salvation. Good old Operation Wolf. This was one of my must-haves for recoil because it's kind of what made the arcade was that giant chain mechanism inside the uh, the metal gun you had there. So getting a little bit of that kickback back at home really makes me want to play this game again. guys. Um, this is uh, just what I've learned this week. 
Um, I was really excited to get a video out, you know, just uh, for a lot of people that were asking me uh, if they could get these recoil working in their guns. If I can do it, literally anyone can do this. Just, it's a lot of trial and error. You want to plug in some codes onto your MAME hooker INI files. You want to keep that debug window open and make sure nothing crashes. If it does, you probably have a typo in your code or you put in something that conflicts. So go ahead and just keep tweaking your INI files, keep looking at that debug window, and just keep playing with these things. Uh, the, the dynamic recoil, the ammo life cage, you know, the lights, it's, it really just you know, elevates the entire gameplay. I was really just happy that this cart played Aliens Extermination because that's, you know, plug and play, that's all I wanted. Everything else was a bonus. So the fact that I could play a bunch of other shooting games with these, I was happy. But now that I can do it with the actual force feedback, with the lights, with the interactive uh, counters, um, I'm just over the moon. I was really excited to try and put this quick video together to show what I had figured out so far this week. And if you guys have any questions, I'll help where I can. Um, I'm a big fan of just DIY. I, you know, like I don't sell this kit. Um, this is just something that if, you know I, I like tinkering with. I kind of like building these things and setting them up almost more than I like playing them. So, but if you are interested in seeing if you can just purchase a setup that's similar to this, I really recommend taking a look over at uh, the Sharkade website and see if you can set up a commission with Dean to uh, set you up a pair of guns from one of his playlists. Um, and I'll link his website in the video description below, along with the machine code that I mentioned in this video for recoil, for barrel lights, and for ammo counters. And I look forward to your questions in the comments, and I'll catch you all in the next video.